If you're struggling with intense physical symptoms like heart palpitations, dizziness, nausea, vertigo, digestive issues, shakiness, and you've been going to your doctor trying to figure out what's going on, and your doctor is saying everything is fine and this is just anxiety. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly what's going on and really what to do to not only understand what's happening, but to focus on how to overcome this once and for all. So with that said, let's get it started. So if you don't know, my name is Sean from Bye Bye Panic, and we help people overcome their panic attacks, their physical symptoms caused by anxiety, when they experience depersonalization, derealization, where they're getting intense intrusive thoughts. And this was something I naturally experienced too in my early 20s, where I was pretty much a carefree kid. I never really struggled with anxiety. I was somebody that was very independent. And what ended up happening was I ended up getting my first panic attack. Now, when I had my panic attack, I didn't even know it was a panic attack. I literally thought I was going to die. I thought I was having a heart attack at the age of 22. And after that, everything changed. I started getting bizarre physical symptoms. I got scary, intrusive thoughts to the point where the thoughts would scare me. And I kept going to the doctors. I remember one time, I went to five different doctors in one day. We had, um, I was in Canada at the time and they had these walk-in clinics. So I went to one walk-in clinic and the doctor was like, you have anxiety. Then I went to, <laughs> I was like, well, you know, I need to figure out what's going on. So then I went to another doctor and that doctor said, yeah, your blood pressure is high, but you're stable. And then that same day, I went to a third doctor who said, I, I, I focused a little bit more on the fact that I was dizzy with that doctor. So that doctor said, oh, you have something called labyrinthitis, which is like an inner ear infection that's causing vertigo. Um, and they said, there's nothing really you can do. Here's some pills. And I think it was very equivalent to Benadryl. Um, and then I went to two more doctors who told me I had anxiety. The last one was an ENT because I was so focused on the dizziness, especially because it was coming with the panic attacks. And they did some maneuvers and said, nope, you're fine. Go ahead and get out of here. And I was frustrated to the point where I came home and home being Austin, Texas, trying to figure out what was going on. I spent thousands of dollars on medical bills, unnecessary uh, medical tests, procedures, things that were completely pointless, only to be told I had anxiety. And it wasn't until I fully understood what was happening that my recovery journey started. And as a consequence, my symptoms ended up going away. So you might be experiencing the same thing. You might be wondering what's going on, why are you experiencing these symptoms, and what to do to really overcome this. The first thing to do and the most important thing to do is always getting everything ruled out by your doctor. If you're concerned about any sort of symptom or sensation, the best person to alleviate that anxiety in the beginning is the doctor. Your doctor is going to do a series of tests trying to figure out what's going on. And if they say you're good, well, then that's a good sign. And if it is something that you need to treat, well, the doctor will help you get it treated. But what is actually interesting with people who struggle with anxiety is that it's not the fact that the doctor told them that everything is fine, is that they have a hard time believing that the doctor didn't find anything. A lot of anxiety sufferers think, oh, well, what if the doctor missed something? What if by the time the doctor finds something, it's too late? I know there's something physically wrong, I can feel it, and the doctor is just neglecting me, and they're not really even identifying this, and they're saying this, this is all in my head. Well, in order to focus on overcoming this, you really need to understand really what it means when the doctor says it's just anxiety. So you have to understand, your doctor's job is to find any sort of physical abnormality, meaning the doctor is specialized at looking at, okay, if you're experiencing these symptoms, is there a physical root cause to this? Meaning, are you having some sort of physical dysfunction that's causing you these intense symptoms? And so what the doctors do is that they have these series of tests to really figure out what's going on. And the good news is, is that these tests are very accurate, especially in today's day and age. It's very easy and quick to identify major things that are going on. Now, once they say that, hey, it's just anxiety or there's nothing wrong, what they're really saying is that there's nothing physical that's causing these symptoms. 
But that doesn't mean that the symptoms aren't real. And if you were like me, you probably felt like you were being neglected and just somebody telling you there's nothing wrong, they were almost invalidating how you were feeling. I wanna tell you as we help people overcome these symptoms that what you're feeling is very real. But the important thing to understand is that the cause of that physical sensation that you might be experiencing is not rooted in something that's physical in origin. A simple way of saying that is that you're having physical symptoms, but that doesn't mean there's something physically wrong. So why are you experiencing these symptoms? What can you do to make this go away? Well, you have to understand that what's really happening here is that your nervous system has become very sensitive. It's not that your nervous system is broken or damaged or anything like that, but what happens is that when you put extreme pressure and stress on your nervous system, your nervous system starts responding a certain way. And how it responds is that it becomes more and more sensitive. See, our nervous system has an innate mechanism to protect itself and that is called the fight or flight response right now everybody has this every mammal has this in fact every animal has this even if you see a lizard when well, they call it a lizard brain where they're really talking about the fight or flight response now this response is designed to protect you from a threat this threat could be historically a tiger a bear um, a snake tribal warfare and you have two variations to react. You either react in fighting it or running away. Now what happens is that when you experience a panic attack, essentially your nervous system goes into this fight or flight mode and you get a release of adrenaline. Now for somebody who's never even experienced a panic attack, just having a panic attack can be very stressful. A lot of people describe it as almost as traumatic. I would try to stay away from that term traumatic in a certain way, but I would look at it a little bit more as you didn't know what was happening and you had a hard time coping with what was going on in the moment. Now, something interesting happens after you get your first panic attack, which is after you get your panic attack, your nervous system becomes sensitized. And the reason why this happens is historically, let's say if you saw a tiger and you managed to get away, you managed to run away. Now, even though you managed to survive and get out of danger, well, your nervous system is very, very intelligent. In fact, as humans, we're the most adaptive creature on this planet. And what it does is that just because you don't see a tiger, your nervous system is still gonna be on high alert because what happens if you see that tiger again? So your nervous system becomes very sensitive. Now, why am I telling you all this? Well, the reason why I'm telling you all this is because a lot of the symptoms you're experiencing from heart palpitations, from dizziness, from nausea, from the intrusive thoughts, you might be experiencing depersonalization, derealization, that comes from the freeze response. I don't wanna to get too much into that, but for right now, we'll throw all of this under the stress response. But all these physical symptoms you're experiencing, the intrusive thoughts, the weird emotions you might be getting, like feelings of impending doom, these are all consequences of your nervous system being sensitized. Meaning, after you go through a stressful situation, for a lot of people it's a panic attack, you're still experiencing stressors. But here's the problem, there is no threat. Right? There's nothing wrong and you're experiencing these symptoms. So because you don't know what's happening and you're identifying a threat, well, the symptoms in itself becomes a threat. What that means is whatever symptoms you're experiencing from the brain fog, from the dizziness, from the nausea, like from the uh, digestive issues, something I really struggled with, well, now that becomes the tiger. And as a consequence, what happens is you're trying to resist it and you're trying to avoid it. So what happens is that you're not experiencing health anxiety. What you're really experiencing is anxiety from your physical symptoms. A lot of people think health anxiety is just being fearful of your health in general. It's actually you experiencing intense physical symptoms and you being concerned that there's something physically wrong. So what keeps health anxiety alive is not knowing what's happening. And so once you get everything ruled out, it's really important to understand what's happening. We call this understanding the mechanics of anxiety and really understanding why this is happening. And as a consequence of that, a lot of the fear ends up dissipating because now you start realizing, well, if I'm having heart palpitations, it's not because there's something defective in my heart and the doctor's just missing something. What's really happening is that my body's producing extra adrenaline and the heart is burning it off. And that's why my heart rate is elevated. So if you're really struggling with health anxiety, one of the best places to start is understanding nervous system sensitization. And there's two resources I would recommend here. The first resource 
is by a lady by the name of Dr. Claire Weeks. She has a book called Hope and Help for Your Nerves. Um, I don't get an affiliate for recommending that. It's honestly one of the books that helped me understand on my recovery journey. You can go on Amazon, check it out. And the second thing I would recommend is the desensitization blueprint. This is something we just released. This is from helping people around the world, thousands of people around the world, helping them fully overcome their symptoms, going back to living. What I just decided was, why don't I create diagrams and infographics to help you understand what's happening so that you can focus on long-term freedom. The feedback from it has been absolutely tremendous. The link is down below. It really breaks down how to focus on overcoming anxiety, how nervous system sensitization works, and what to expect on the recovery journey. So the link is down below. Now, the last thing I would mention is, one once you start realizing and understanding the mechanics of anxiety, then it's about focusing on the solution. See, what's happened over time is that you've been experiencing these symptoms, you've become very hyper-focused on these symptoms, you've been doing everything to resist the symptoms. And what you're going to find very ironically is that even though you do all these things, you don't get better. In fact, if you really dig deep, you will see that your symptoms actually are getting worse. And a lot of the reasons why it's getting worse is because you're focusing on it, you're resisting it, and because you're resisting it, you're teaching your nervous system that, hey, there is a threat, and your nervous system is becoming more and more sensitized. So the goal with overcoming these symptoms is learning to desensitize your nervous system. Now, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, desensitizing your nervous system doesn't happen overnight. It requires you to have patience because your nervous system is very stubborn, and the reason why it's stubborn is simply because it wants to keep you alive. It doesn't really care about the fact of, oh yes, I'm creating symptoms for Sean, he's very uncomfortable. The goal of the nervous system, the goal of the body is, hey, is Sean alive? Okay, we're doing the right thing. And I'm not gonna let go of this because Sean feels uncomfortable because what if there is a tiger? So I wanna make sure I'm protecting him. So recognizing that this isn't gonna go away overnight, but it does go away and you can go back to living. You know, from somebody who is going to the doctors nonstop, racking up $30,000 in medical bills, to somebody who just goes back to living fully and freely, a lot of it was just desensitizing my nervous system and really focusing on what we call long-term freedom. And then the last thing I will say before ending this video is, once you rule everything out as anxiety and you start learning how to respond, it's very important that you throw all the symptoms under the anxiety umbrella. Too many people start labeling their symptoms as anxiety or not anxiety. They're trying to say, well, my heart palpitations are, are from anxiety, but my derealization, depersonalization is from something else. And that never works. You can't put things in different buckets. If you've gotten everything ruled out, from your doctor, well then the important thing is instead of having 50 problems moving forward, you only have one problem, it's anxiety. All the symptoms you're experiencing are manifestations of one problem. If you can focus on desensitizing your nervous system, all the symptoms disappear. Now, every single symptom will disappear at different periods. I like to say some symptoms are uh, stickier than others and it's often the symptom that you fear the most that tends to be the most stickiest which means that tends to be the last thing to fade away but once you start focusing on the right steps then you can focus on overcoming this going back to living and not really dealing with this now I know I said that was the last part of the video but I do want to give one extra piece of advice especially if you've been watching this video up to this point the biggest thing is as you start going through the recovery journey, you might feel alone, you might feel isolated, you might not feel like somebody understands. What I always say is find a guide, somebody who knows what's going on, to guide you through the recovery journey and help you fully come out of this. Um, with anxiety recovery, it can feel lonely. You Sometimes it's unsure. Are you doing this right? Are you not doing this right? How do I know? And the best way is really having somebody from the outside that's guiding you through the journey who's done this and knows what's going on. And in my opinion, someone who's gone through the experience themselves. So I would try to find that within your community or somewhere in your area. If you want me and my team to guide you through the recovery journey, we have a mentorship program where we're helping people around the world fully overcome it, people just like you. Um, if you want to know more, check out some of their success stories down below. They talk about recovery, what it was like. They don't hold back. They'll tell you exactly what helped, what to expect on the journey, and really how to focus on long-term freedom. And if you feel like this is a good fit and you really resonate a lot with these uh, members, then maybe it's worth applying and taking a look at it. And what we can do is we can look at your situation together and really see, okay, is this a good fit for you? Is the mentorship something that's gonna help you on the journey? And if it does, cool, we'll guide you through the journey. And if not, no worries, we'll still point you in the right direction and probably give you some resources. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.